Hey guys, and welcome to Declassified, where this time we'll be looking at Van Helsing! <laughs> the movie begins with an introduction to our antagonist, Count Dracula, the master of jump scares. Success! Oh. Your peculiar experiment have met you unwelcome in most of the civilized world. Stay back! You can't kill me, Victor. And he does this the whole movie! What are you saying? Why do you think I brought you here? Dracula wants a scientist named Victor to create a monster for him. A triumph of science over God! <laughs> But he says he'd rather die. So he does. The monster wakes up in time just to witness this and takes the remains of Victor out of the castle. And we learn that he... Frankenstein! Frankenstein escapes to the top of a tower. That's on fire. Brilliant. So that he can yell... then die. And Dracula shows up to be all, yeah, I'm still the best looking guy in this movie, and I got three ladies to prove it. We then move ahead to one year later in Paris. There's a mysterious man walking down the dark streets of Paris at night. He hears a scream, a woman's scream. He goes to investigate, only to find he's too late. But the killer left a clue. A smoking cigar. Suddenly, he sees the man behind it, over in the clock tower. Inside the tower, he comes face to face with the mysterious killer, and we find out that our masked hero is... I'd hate to be such a nuisance. Oh crap, it's Hugh Jackman. I... I, I thought this was a vampire movie, not a Hugh Jackman movie. You got me good. Don't use your guns! Pop out the claws! <laughs> eh, close enough. So they fight, fight, and fight some more, then do a thing where it looks like Van Wolverine will pull him off the ledge. But nope! That leads to another minute-long action scene that ultimately ends with the guy falling off the ledge anyways. Thanks, movie. How long is this thing? Two hours! <sighs> then a group of guards are not only able to see Van Helsing with their supervision, they know it was him that knocked the guy off the roof. But that's okay, because thanks to his scene-cutting powers, he's back to the Vatican instantly. Van Jackman meets up with his plucky sidekick, Carl. Hey, that's Faramir from Lord of the Rings who provides him with a machine gun crossbow. You know, that probably would have been handy in Gondor, man. No wonder why your dad was always so mad at you. We also learn that Van Helsing lost his memory and now works with a secret organization that kills monsters. His next assignment? Romania. To help slay Dracula. Van Logan and Carl are met by Anna. You, turn around. Wait a minute, that's Kate Beckinsdale. And she's hunting vampires? Again? We don't trust strangers. Well, I guess we'll see what happens when an actress who does the same role over and over meets an actor who does the same role over and over. Kill them. Oh, I'm here to help you. I don't need any help. Really? Everybody
Okay, so really bad CG aside, I think we found our winner. This is Hugh Jackman's action movie, and Kate Beckinsdale will be filling in the role of, well, it doesn't matter, she did not Hugh Jackman. Congrats, Hugh. Anything you want to say? That's a nice stick. Oh. Well done. Your reputation precedes you. Next time, stay close. You're no good to me dead. We then move to Dracula overacting and being sad that one of his brides died. We lost Mariska. Mister. Hey there, my darlings. Do not worry. I shall find another bride. What? Do we mean so little to you? Have you no heart? No! I have no heart! After that, Anna's brother shows up as a werewolf and leads them to Castle Frankenstein where we learn that Dracula is about to use him in a new experiment to bring his undead children to life. Then Death Dealer isn't having that, so it leads to a showdown between him and Dracula. Perhaps that is a conversation for another time. Man, I love this guy's acting, but the plot twist comes when Dracula calls him Gabriel. Hello, Gabriel. Excuse me, I believe you're mistaken. His name is a Wolverine. I heard you were the moon and I was your Wolverine. But you're the trickster, aren't you? I'm just the fool who got played. But ultimately, Anna's brother isn't enough to sustain the vampire babies, and the experiment fails, and they all die. What happened? Uh, they just died. We then get yet another scene of Anna going on about her family, and Van Helsing going on about his lost memories, when suddenly they fall down a hole. Just cuz. Van Helsing and Anna wake up in the hole and discover the Frankenstein's monster who's been living under there for, well, however long it's been since the beginning of the movie till now. I am the key to my father's machine. The key to life. He tells them that they need to kill him, otherwise Dracula will find him, and he's the key to Dracula's machine. Wait, so Frankenstein says that he wants to exist, then the next thing you know, he tells them that he is the key to Dracula's machine, and you need to kill him in order to save the world. Like, which one do you want them to do, Frank? Exist or stop you? Those are two completely different things. What do you want? To exist. If you value your lives and the lives of your kind, you will kill me! So they decide to keep him safe, which means that they take him to Rome. So it's time for some more traveling music! Hunt them down. Kill them both. <sighs> but Dracula, of course, decides to stop the one thing I actually enjoy about this movie. So they can have an action scene of Van best at what he does, invading vampiric pursuit in a carriage from the brides. Which results in one of the silliest scenes in the movie. <laughs> Followed by a silly death of the second bride and the death of Werewolf Bro. There's a break in the action, where we find out that Van Helsing's been bitten by a werewolf. Those don't really look like bite marks, but whatever. Before Anna is kidnapped by the last remaining bride. You know, you could have dropped her from the ravine, and that would have been the end of the family, and Van Helsing's job would have been over. But instead she reappears to tell him that she'll trade Anna for Frankenstein, and will do so at the All Hallows Eve Ball.
Well, I'll give this movie one thing. At least this ball is more interesting than the club from Queen of the Damned. Unfortunately for Van Helsing, his double cross fails when Igor arrives with Frankenstein, and Dracula reveals to the tenants of his summer home, Van Helsing! Ladies and gentlemen, I give to you Van Helsing! So I all hope you're thinking what I'm thinking right now. Dracula's whole goal in this movie is to find a source of energy that can keep his vampiric children alive. Yet he's clearly shown that he can create vampires. Hence his brides. And now there's a literal castle full of vampires from kids to adults. WHAT IS THE POINT OF HIM NEEDING FRANKENSTEIN?! Yes! Huh. Now I know what it's for! But, thanks to Carl dropping a sunlight grenade? He kills all the vampires in the castle, but Igor and Dracula still get away, so now they've got to go back to Castle Frankenstein to rescue him. They must have taken all the equipment to Dracula's lair. Or not. Now they've got to find where Dracula's real castle is. However, even though Anna's family couldn't find it for 400 years, Carl finds it in about two minutes with casual detective work. Once inside, they find out from Igor that a werewolf is the only person that can kill Dracula, but they need to do so before the final stroke of midnight, otherwise Dracula will forever control them. Carl and Anna then go off to find the cure, but run into... Did I scare you? Nope. Then maybe I need to try a little harder. Carl fights Igor... Anna fights the bride. <laughs> Van Helsing rescues Frank. What are you doing? You must find the cure! My friends are doing it for me! Anna still fights the bride. but is rescued by Frankenstein's accidentally running into her. Midnight strikes, and Van Helsing becomes the Wolverine. So they start their fight to the death. Anne and the bride finally finish their fight. Anne, my love, it is your blood that shall keep me beautiful. What do you think of that? <laughs> I think if you're going to kill someone, kill them. Don't stand there talking about it! Van Wolverine kills Dracula, which in turn kills all of his vampiric spawn. He's so overjoyed that he hugs Anna. To death. She's dead. Well, the film ends with Van Helsing and Carl giving Anna a funeral pyre. Frank sailing away, and Van Helsing looking on as the one true love of his life that he knew for maybe a day has finally redeemed her family. Well, that's Van Helsing. I gotta say, overall, it was a pretty boring movie. The biggest problem with the movie is that it has a lot of filler scenes. From the subplot of Anna's brother being a werewolf, to the long gearing up scenes, and the talking scenes between Van Helsing and Anna where they repeatedly talk about the same thing. 
Anna's always complaining about being the last of her family, and Van Helsing's always complaining about not having his memories and not knowing who he is. All that together adds an extra hour to the movie that frankly just didn't need to be there. That's not the worst vampire movie I've ever seen, but it is definitely the most boring. But it was still a better love story than Twilight. WAIT! These are the Oscars! And this is my dream! I am a slumdog, I am a wrestler! I